In this video, the viewer will learn how to configure the Modbus gateway and serial device server features of the TRIO Ethernet data radios. TRIO has two Ethernet radio product lines. The Q data radios are licensed products operating in either the 400 to 518 MHz UHF range or the 135 to 175 MHz VHF range. The J series radios are licensed free products operating in either the 900 MHz or 2.4 GHz bands. The J-Series port settings have some minor differences, but are substantially similar to the Q-Data radios. The rest of this video will focus on the Q-Radio. Here is the serial COM1 port setup of a Q-Data radio. The default mode of COM port 1 is text terminal. In this mode, the radio may be configured or diagnostic testing may be performed using a simple terminal program such as HyperTerminal using 19.2.8.N.1, no handshaking. If not required, this port may be disabled. The port may be configured as a serial device server, which we will discuss in more detail on the next slide. The Modbus gateway may instead be chosen. It will also be discussed in more detail. Lastly, the port may be configured as a system port, providing the ability to support the TVU diagnostic protocol. First, we will discuss the serial device server mode. This provides the ability to transport serial protocols encapsulated within an Ethernet layer. The transport layer may be TCP, UDP, or point-to-point -point protocol. Protocols such as Modbus RTU in TCP or DNP3 in UDP are simply converted to serial by removing the TCP or UDP transport layer within the radio. At the serial end of the wireless link, serial protocols may be encapsulated in TCP or UDP for transport over the air to Ethernet-enabled devices. It is alternately possible to provide a serial connection at both ends of the wireless link. These serial-to-serial -serial links can transport most common serial data protocols. The Modbus gateway mode is configured for the most part the same as serial device server mode, but is specifically used for conversion between Ethernet protocols called Modbus TCP or Modbus UDP and the serial Modbus RTU protocol. The Modbus gateway mode may also be used to transport serial in, serial out Modbus RTU messages. The use of TCP at the transport layer is designed to create a virtual wire connection. This is intended to be highly reliable with acknowledgement of each message. There are messages to open and close a connection before and after sending traffic, plus regular keep alive messages when the connection is idle. But as a result, a link using TCP will be significantly less efficient than one using UDP. For each protocol message sent, TCP has about 2.5 times more overhead than UDP. Many system designers assume that TCP simply must be used. Modern technologies are slowly changing that thinking. SCADA hosts, RTUs, and PLCs now all include their own reliability-improving features, such as timeout delays and retries. Also, modern radios such as TRIO Q and J include error correction features, making the radio system more reliable. TCP will sometimes be required, perhaps due to limitations of the devices on the network, for example, no support for UDP, or perhaps a customer's demand for the highest reliability possible, even at the cost of network bandwidth. UDP implementation in TRIO J and Q allows for creation of point-to-point -point or point-to-multipoint networks, not just the broadcast transmissions that many think it is limited to. Scrolling further down the COM1 setup page, we find serial port settings. These will not be discussed further, but must be configured as required to communicate with each locally connected device. These settings may be different at each site, with each device possibly having unique requirements. The packet layer options will change when the serial port mode is selected. Modbus gateway mode provides only two options, including Modbus for transport specifically of Modbus messages, and SLIP to provide the ability to transport serial diagnostic and programming messages generated by TRIO's TVU Plus management suite for TRIO serial only radios. When in serial device server mode, several more options are available. These include standard, which is compatible with most serial data protocols, 
Modbus providing port buffering to encapsulate an entire Modbus message and send it all at once. DNP3 and IEC870 for port buffering and transport specifically of these two related protocols. Medina for transport of this fairly rare protocol. SLIP as noted earlier and also CUSTOM. The selection of custom packet layer allows handling of unusual protocols which may require special handling. As with packet layer, the transport protocol options will change depending on whether Modbus Gateway or Serial Device Server is chosen. With Modbus Gateway, two options are available. TCP transport protocol will create a connection between the source and destination devices with end-to-end -end acknowledgement of messages. UDP will instead provide a connectionless delivery service with no protocol layer acknowledgement or error checking. These functions are typically done by the end devices and can also be done by TRIO radios transporting the message. If serial device server is instead chosen, three options are available. These are TCP and UDP as discussed before, but also point-to-point -point protocol. This provides IP access to the Ethernet network via the serial port, but requires configuration in the Ethernet device and is not commonly used. As noted earlier, the protocols transported by serial device server and Modbus gateway modes are different. However, configuration of a TCP or UDP connection is essentially the same, so the following examples will not show both. The next few slides will show actual wireless networks and will discuss the key configuration items required for each example in both the entry point and remote radios. It is assumed that a working radio system has first been established. First we will examine one method of creating a point-to-point serial-in, serial-out link which uses the TCP transport layer. In both radios the mode has been set to serial device server allowing for transport of any serial protocol, not just Modbus. The packet layer has, in this case, been set to Modbus, allowing transport of the Modbus RTU protocol or a similar protocol which requires port buffering. The transport protocol has been set to TCP, providing a high reliability connection-oriented service. The entry point radio is set to a protocol mode of TCP server, which tells it to respond to requests from the remote radio, which is configured as a TCP client. The TCP client, in this case the remote radio, requires a primary IP address, which must be set the same as the IP address of the entry point radio. And finally, the remote radio, configured as the TCP client, must be configured with a primary IP port number, the same as the local IP port number in the server radio which here is the entry point. The next example will demonstrate the creation of a point to multipoint system using UDP and providing serial in, serial out capability. This system can have many remote sites where the previous system allowed only one. The entry point radio serial port is configured for serial device server mode. The remote port must be set the same. The transport protocol layer in both radios is set to UDP. As part of the UDP configuration, the protocol mode must be set to point to multipoint. This configures a serial network which operates within the radio network. The entry point radio's node type is set to point, which means it is the central radio in the system. And the remote radio's node type is set to multipoint, which means it is one of several or multiple remote radios in the serial network. In the remote radio, the remote IP address is that of the point, radio, the central radio in the serial network. UDP messages are transmitted from the point radio using the multicast technology which allows all properly configured devices to hear the message. This is done by sending the messages to a multicast IP address. The point or central radio must be configured with this address as its remote multicast IP address while the multipoint radios must be configured with the same address as the local multicast IP address. The messages are also sent to a specific IP port number. Here, 30,010 is used. If a second multicast network were to be set up using the radio's second serial port, that traffic can be kept separate using a different IP port number. In this example, a point to multipoint network is configured, this time allowing Ethernet traffic at the entry point radio to be converted to serial at the remotes, 
with use of TCP transport. There is no need for any additional configuration in the entry point radio as its serial ports are not used. One or many remote radios can be included in this network type. Here the Modbus TCP gateway will be configured for conversion between Modbus TCP and serial Modbus RTU protocols. The packet layer is set to Modbus in the remote serial port configuration and the transport protocol to TCP. The protocol mode is TCP server telling the remote radio serial port to respond to requests from the Ethernet network. An Ethernet SCADA host application is running on the entry point computer. To communicate with the serial RTU, the host software will use the Modbus TCP protocol. It must specify the IP address of the remote radio in messages sent to the serial RTU as well as the IP port number configured within the serial port connected to the RTU. Here, port 30010 is used. If a second serial device were to be connected to this radio's COM port 2, it could be assigned a different port number, for example, 30011. In this last example, another point-to-multipoint network providing Ethernet to serial conversion will be configured, but in this case the UDP transport protocol will be used. The port mode will be set to Serial Device Server. The packet layer is set to DNP3 and IEC 870, with the protocol set to UDP, in order to carry the DNP3 in UDP protocol. The UDP protocol mode is set to point-to-point, -point to create a virtual connection between this radio and the host application. Setting the UDP listen mode to dynamic tells the port to respond to all incoming requests to this radio from the Ethernet system that are using the correct IP port number. The host software sends messages to the remote radio's IP address and to the IP port number configured as the local IP port within this serial port. Messages may be sent to other IP addresses to reach different locations or to another IP port to reach the same location but the second serial port. Thank you for watching this video in which configuration of the Modbus gateway and serial device server in the TRIO Ethernet radios for several network types was demonstrated.